Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Pyotr Bagration, the Tier 7 Premium Russian Heavy Cruiser. Now, it's been a few updates since this ship has received a few buffs, mainly to its overall HP pool, obtaining the radar consumable, and also getting a buff to the main battery reload. Since then, I've been playing this ship quite a bit, and I think it is taking over my personal number one spot for a tier 7 premium cruiser. I think that the buffs to the ship simply made it a much better ship for team utility, and also the main battery reload buff just simply made this ship so good. Now the Pyotr definitely still does have a few weaknesses, mainly in the armor. It is a ship that is pretty much covered in 25 millimeters of plating, so it will be overmatched by 380 millimeter guns or higher, which at tier 7 pretty much is every single battleship except the Odin or Brandenburg that have 305 millimeters. But other than those two ships, you're pretty much going to be overmatched. Unfortunately, not having a 27 millimeter bow or casemate, you can't play this ship as aggressive. Now it does have a icebreaker that will protect you from citadels at close range, although the upper bow and pretty much the rest of the ship can be overmatched. So if you ever do find yourself in a situation having to bow in towards a battleship, you are definitely going to take huge chunks of damage. The Pyotr also has some pretty bad firing angles, both to the front and to the rear. So you do need to be very careful whenever you're trying to make use of all of your guns. Otherwise, you will be showing broadside and the Pyotr does have a citadel that is above the waterline. However, there is a spaced armor, so sometimes you can be saved by it, but it's better not to take chances. And finally, the last thing that I think is a weakness for this ship is the handling the turning circle and rudder shift is pretty slow and it is a quite clumsy ship. Although once you get used to it, this really shouldn't be a problem. Now in this game, I am playing the Pyotr quite aggressive here, and I am not afraid to take a fight with a Suzuya. I am simply aiming for the Citadel, even though he's slightly angled because the high penetration of these armor piercing shells, and also the slightly improved pen angles do allow us to start citadeling even some of the angled cruisers, especially a Suzuya. If he had turned out early, I would have simply shot at his funnel and most likely would have also gotten some citadels as I do have a clip of that somewhere on my channel. Now that we've killed off the enemy Suzuya, we are free to capture this objective. We do still need to be very careful because there is an enemy Massachusetts that was last spotted in the spawn north of Charlie. Being a 406mm gun battleship, if he does take a shot at me and ends up landing some hits, it's definitely going to hurt. I do want to try to get to the north side of this cap and utilize some of these islands in order to spot and also play around so I can start farming some damage off of the Massachusetts. I do end up spotting him and he is heading over on this side. So I am going to try to use this island right in front of me, poke my bow around and shoot my front guns. And if I do it right, I can fire my main guns without ever getting spotted. However, as I get to the corner of this island, the enemy Saipan is basically coming after me. So I simply turn into the island in order to beach and start reversing so I can get behind the island while this carrier is dropping me and not take damage from the Massachusetts. I don't know why I put my ship in stop and well, not being in reverse that entire time does allow the enemy Massachusetts to get off a shot and he does get a few pens in my bow which does hit us for quite a bit. And also this anime Saipan has been dropping us, but we've been getting extremely lucky that his bombs hasn't been hitting our ship. Now the Massachusetts has damage conned our fire, and well we do have a friendly CV who is helping us and there are torpedo planes on the way. This Massachusetts has burned his damage con in order to put out a single fire, 
And, well, as a battleship, that is probably the worst thing you can do, especially when there are carriers in the game. Our friendly CV does drop torps on him, and they do land, and it also does cause a flood. We also start a fire on his bow, so he is perma-fired and also perma-flooding. The enemy Saipan is coming after us again, this time with some torpedo planes. So I do start moving forward and turn bow in towards the torpedoes in order to try and minimize the damage that I am going to take. I am able to barely dodge those torpedoes and there is another strike that the Saipan misses out on. With the Massachusetts sailing broadside, I would be better off firing AP and getting a lot of chunk damage in. I do fire one more salvo of HE, trying to set a triple fire and then switch to AP, although at this point he is starting to bow in. He does hit me for quite a bit of damage, plus the two torpedoes from the Saipan pretty much chunked half of my HP away. And now this Massachusetts charging in, and I am the only surface ship on this side of the map. I'm in a bit of trouble if the Saipan continues to focus me, and this Massachusetts keeps pushing in and they work together. I am pretty much not going to really have anywhere to go. I am now trying to just simply use this small island in order to hide from the Massachusetts, forcing him to push in and allowing me to use my torpedoes in order to kill him off, even if it does end up being a trade. I use my radar so I can see where this Massachusetts is headed, just so that I can avoid him as much as possible, especially with this Saipan still coming after me. He drops another set of bombs. Fortunately, the one that hits my ship ends up hitting the turret and shatters, and also does not cause a fire. Now the enemy Saipan does end up getting spotted by one of our friendly destroyers, and he becomes our main target. If we're able to kill off the enemy Saipan, and then play around this island against the Massachusetts, we have a much better chance of surviving here. With the enemy Saipan now being chased by our friendly destroyer and also shot by him, the Saipan is now focused on our friendly destroyer who's chasing him. And now we do have a bit of wiggle room here. I do keep shooting AP at this Saipan. Since we do have increased pen, we can definitely citadel him. And with this Massachusetts now on such low HP, because our friendly CV has been dropping him, I do decide to go forward and put some AP into his superstructure in order to kill him off. However, as soon as I start going forward, we can see his health increasing, so he's just popped his repair party. I have to angle in in order to try my best to mitigate damage, and I do survive with about one bar remaining. Unfortunately, one of the weaknesses is the maneuverability of his ship, so we do struggle to get off our torpedoes. We are very lucky that we have increased penetration and pen angles, and we are able to pen the bow of that Massachusetts before he gets off the ram. Not only do we survive against the Massachusetts, our friendly teammates were able to kill off the enemy Saipan, and well, with his last squadron, he decides his best interest is to come and try drop bombs on a cruiser that is on low HP. He drops his bombs and, well, they both miss. He could have definitely been a little more useful to his team, simply spotting for the last two minutes that he can fly his squadron around, although I'm sure he didn't really care and just simply moved on to the next game. Now it is a 4 versus 3. The enemy team does still have a destroyer and two enemy battleships. I have used my last heal, so now I am going to try and find an island that I can utilize to farm over or simply use as cover to poke my bow around and shoot without being detected. However, the current islands that I have around me aren't low enough that these low shell arcs can lob over, so I'm going to have to shoot and then move into cover. The enemy La Fudua is also very low on HP. It doesn't seem like he has will to rebuild, so he will definitely be our target, especially as a battleship with 380mm guns. 
we do want to try and get him off the board as quickly as possible. Seeing that his guns are not facing us, we do take a shot as we move into cover. However, since that destroyer is in front of him, we do stay spotted and he does actually get off a salvo. So I slam on the brakes and turn in. Fortunately, most of that ship's salvo did hit the island, so I didn't take damage. The enemy Fletcher, being spotted by our carrier, is going to definitely be our number one target, especially since he is now pushing in to try and contest the cap. With the two battleships still behind the island, I am simply just going to sit here and try to do as much damage as I can to the Fletcher. Unfortunately, he does go unspotted, but we do have another squadron from our friendly CV heading over to spot the Fletcher. Although, now that I have reversed too far, the Rafudra has also taken a shot at me, and, well, luckily Russian propulsion, I do accelerate fast enough and get into cover. Since they know that I'm here, I am definitely not going to take a chance by reversing out and then trying to farm the FDG or the Lafudra from this spot of the island again. I am going to go forward and also go to the right side of the island, especially because this Fletcher is spotted. He is also well within our radar range, so if he does end up smoking up to try and fight our friendly DDs, we can simply radar him and basically kill him off. Now looking at the minimap and seeing where the FDG is and where he's headed, I can safely push out from behind this cover with that island in the middle of the cap protecting me from the enemy battleship and well now the Fletcher is caught by us and simply has nowhere to go because he is in between us and an island. This quick reloading 180mm guns does allow us to deal a lot of damage to destroyers and if it was a situation where we did have to use our radar, we would be able to get off more shots. Which now the Pyotr with the reload buff can get off 3 shots within 1 radar duration whereas previously it could only get off 2. So the buff definitely does help with team utility and being able to kill off destroyers within your one radar use. And now all that is left is the enemy Friedrich de Grosse. And well, we are within torpedo range. Our first salvo of torpedoes had enough range to reach him and well, we are simply just going to keep pushing him. He gets on low HP, but he does use a repair party and that does allow us to get in a shot and finally killing him off we do about 160,000 damage. Definitely a very solid performance in the Pyotr Bagration. 4 kills and also 4,100 base XP. We also had a Fletcher that did 3,300 base XP, which definitely did help in winning this game, I am sure. And I'm also sure that he was thinking he was having a great game and was going to end up at the top. But then, lo and behold, a Pyotr with 4100 base XP. I don't think anyone realizes how good this cruiser is after the recent buffs. It is a bit tricky to play at times, although if you can figure it out, it definitely performs extremely well. Going into my build, I do use Nikolai Kuznetsov as my main commander. I have it set up as a full accuracy build. You can get away with using some concealment in order to get a stealth radar. However, having a 12 kilometer detectability and then 11.7 radar, it is still very possible to make use of the radar and ensure that you catch destroyers. Now I have the fire skill instead of the twist and track skill, mainly because I can still pretty much work around a 0.3 kilometer difference from detection and radar. So having the RPF skill isn't as important, but that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and subscribe for more and share it with your friends and leave a comment down below for other ships you want to see in the future. But until next time, aloha.